Well, Micah, it's good to have you back today. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me again. Yeah. So we've had lots of comments about your Braves hat. Hey, <laughs> well, well, break tradition, right? <laughs> <laughs> One of the others asked if they could come on the podcast only if they could wear a hat like you did. So <laughs> we'll see how that fleshes breaking, out. Yeah, breaking grounds a little bit. <laughs> today we're going to talk about King of Glory which is um, a psalm rewrite on the album. And um, we did a few of these, and so this one was kind of unique how it came about. And then we're going to talk about just why use the Psalter? Why, why go back to the Psalms for inspiration for new songs? Yeah. So I'm excited about today. So let's dig in. So, Micah, we're going to talk about King of Glory, and um, we actually didn't pick this song to go on the album. Right? We had recorded, I, th- I think, I remember this correctly, we had recorded eight tracks, mm-hmm. um, and we got down to nine and ten, right. and we just could not decide. Um, I think we had like seven songs, seven or eight songs to pick from, Yeah, and we needed two. Yeah. Um, so, we tossed them all to Glenn, our producer. Glenn Tabor, Gat Three Records. You can look it up. Um, and Glenn picked this one. Right. I was a little surprised. Yeah, because this was like, so the very first song we wrote was with Jared. Yep. Yep. And then I believe this is like one of the next songs that we finished, which is like early what seventeen? Yeah. Twenty eighteen. And it sounds right because we were transitioning into going through the Psalms book by book. Right. Um, in both of our congregations, mm-hmm. and so we were trying to look at. We were making an attempt to look ahead. And look for a psalm that we could write a song about. Right. And we stumbled on Psalm 24. Yeah. yeah. So we wrote this song, and I thought that we would do this like a couple of times and then be done. Sure. Um, the arrangement that we originally did here was okay. Yeah. yeah. It, it didn't. It didn't. <laughs> it didn't blow me away. Right. So when we sent Glenn the demo, I thought, but he pulled this out of the hat and was like. We can, this one's a good one. We can make this work. Yeah. And then he started putting his spin on it. And it's one of my favorite cuts on the project now. It's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's just huge. And, and I've so. loved it. And I, from our church, we still sing it to this day. Yeah. And, and yeah. the church has really took a hold of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, at the, at the time, you know, I thought it sounded awesome. I thought it was great when we finished it, but I didn't think nothing of it. You know, yeah, yeah. it was just, it was just another song we wrote. Yeah. Yeah. On a Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> This is one of the ones though, that we did in one day, right? Um, which didn't happen that often, Mm-mm. and we did it, and um, everybody's already seen Jay's podcast from, from weeks previous. Right. Um, he talked about what it's like when I go into his office on a Thursday and say, hey, yeah. we're going to do this song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I may have given him a week, but uh, I didn't, when we brought this to the table, we didn't give him very much time to pull it together. Yeah. So I think it's part of the reason why... We did it and it was done, right? Because um, we didn't put a ton. We just never, we never went into it thinking we're going to have this one for forever. No, and it was it's unique because unlike every other song on the album, it's there's three parts to the song. There's not right. various verses. It's one verse, right? And and so yeah, th- so that's helpful for Jay at that moment, right? You know, it's, <laughs> it's not too complicated, but <laughs> right, 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 right. And then we went to the studio and Glenn made it super complicated. So <laughs> it was a lot of fun. So background on this, you had to actually remind me of the process this morning when we were right. talking through this because I didn't remember what we were talking about at the time. But this is kind of a kingship psalm, mm-hmm. um, very triumphant. Mm-hmm. Um, and so walk us through how we came about crafting this a little bit. Yeah. Um, if you can remember, because I don't. <laughs> that ain't good. Um, so, well... So Psalm 23 obviously right. always gets all the hype, right? Yep. I mean, yep. and it should. It's one of the most beautiful written psalms. Yeah. You hear it in funerals all the time. Hear it in just right. services. Right. Psalm 24, um, it's kind of like the forgotten child sometimes, but it shouldn't be. It's right. so Christ-centric. Um, so I just remember, I think, <laughs> that <laughs> we'll go with it. We were just in this situation <laughs> where, um, like, what psalm should we write? Right. And, and right. I think for some reason Psalm 24 just came up. Yeah. Um, and we just started looking at the text and well, man, like, why would we even change anything? Why do we need to change anything? Yep. It's yep. in there. Um, yep. So we just began working on that process. Um, and I was just reading through Zechariah at the time. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, Hannah have that marked by yeah. the way for if you're watching. <laughs> um, and so Zechariah has this vision in chapter three of Joshua, right? And he says that he's dressed with filthy clothes as he stood before the angel. Hmm. So the angel said to the Lord, and the, or so the angel of the Lord spoke to those standing before him, take off his filthy clothes. Then he said to him, see, I have removed your iniquity from you hmm. and I will clothe you with festive robes. Then I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. So a clean turban was placed on his head and they clothed him in garments while the angel of the hmm. Lord was standing nearby. Um, and so that picture is especially at the beginning of Psalm 24. Right. Who can right. Uh, ascend the hill of the Lord? Yeah. He who has a clean hand and pure heart. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. all of that was just like intermingled, I guess you'd say. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we know that Christ is the only one who can ascend the hill of the Lord. He's the only right. one found worthy. Um, so when you say it's uh, Christ-centered, that's exactly what you're pushing at. Right. Um, although this uh, has elements of uh, king goes into battle, returns, the lifting up of the gates. We were rereading, I think, what I was reading at that point. Right. Um, right. which is that the lift up the head would be like the gatekeeper looking up at the king in honor of the king returning from battle, yeah. having conquered um, what he went to pursue. Mm -hmm. And what a beautiful picture of uh, Christ being our king who has conquered death, hell, and the grave. Yeah. And our he lifts our heads. And we, we know that that's in the Psalms too. He's a lifter of our heads. Absolutely. Um, so there's just really neat language all the way throughout this yeah and even like what a response so we you know um righteousness springs out of blessing yes. we're clothed in garments of grace father we seek you our hearts now yearn to, to see your, hold your face hold yeah. your face yeah yeah so because of christ's work now we can come before god's throne yep. Yep. clean holy how we have the, we're the one who has clean yeah. hands of your heart because of christ yep and then what's our response is what you just said yes lift up your head yes. lift up your gates you yeah know? yeah and i hadn't even planned to, to talk about this today but i think it's you've pushed in right where we are um many times people will look at us as worship leaders and they'll say thank you for leading me into worship today right and i'm always gracious with that we would never be ungracious or unkind sure, with that sure. but i technically don't lead you into worship um, the only way we can approach the Father is through the sacrifice of the Son. That's right. So Jesus Christ is the true worship leader. That's right. He has given us access to the Father. And so all I do as the worship leader is point you to Jesus yeah. and the sacrifice that he yeah, made. Yeah, yeah. We are literally cross. following John the Baptist who says, yes. we hold the lamb, right? Yes, that's, exactly. That's our job. Who yeah. takes away the sins of the world. That's right. So um, I think it's very fascinating. You, you talked about this being a verse, um, a chorus, and then a bridge. Yeah. And this hymn in the ESV, or this psalm in the ESV, is broken up into three sections. And um, I think we were attempting to sort of keep that. I think we use the the earth is the Lord's as the bridge, which is the beginning part of that verse. Right. And then we used as the verse, verse, um, the verse, verse. Uh, we used <laughs> the verse in our song is one of the verses yeah. from this. And that's uh, verse three through not, mm -hmm. through six. And then our chorus is basically seven through ten. Yeah. So we tried to stay true to how this was laid out. We just organ reorganized it slightly. Yeah. And so we use verse one as a continual response. Right. Right. The, the earth is the Lord's. Mm -hmm. um, what is it? The I forget what we said in this the bridge at the moment. But yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty much right from yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a basic response, like you said. Yeah. We're just kind of readjust it just a right. little bit to work. Right. But yeah. So it's very close to the original psalm. Yeah. This one was a little bit different than others. We didn't try to reinvent the wheel here. Yeah. Uh, we and what just I love stuck about with the Word of God. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about psalms when we're written about the psalm in the psalms is because yeah. you know, it's easy to remember the psalms then. Yeah. Or, yes, or exactly. Scripture, you know. You're memorizing scripture as you're yeah. learning the psalm. Yeah. Yeah. So why that and that's a perfect segue to what I really want to one of the other things I want to talk about is why use the psalms in worship? Because I feel like that the church went away from this for a while. Yeah. And there seems to be a return. Mm -hmm. um, Shane and Shane have put, is it two albums out? I that are so. completely Psalms. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there seems to be this push back into this mm -hmm. world. Why use the Psalms in corporate worship? And why should we not use the Psalms in corporate worship? Hmm. Um, I'd love to ping pong this a little bit. Just yeah. To have yeah, yeah absolutely. Because um, I think my answer is going to be long here. Um, <laughs> I just think traditionally... Yeah, the Psalms are the songs for God's people. Yes, right? yes. historically. So, yes, think about in the Old Testament times. Right, 
they had all these different psalms that were written yep. to be sung, but they were sung in specific situations throughout the the calendar year of yes. the Jewish um, yes yes life, right. right? Yeah. Um, but then what's interesting is so after the Old Testament, we know there's a 400 gap where God didn't speak publicly, right? Or right. Didn't make any um, do any signs right in front of God's people, and all of a sudden Christ comes to the scene, mm-hmm. and so in the Gospels we see that this tradition carried on. Because the, the Psalms are all through the Gospels. Exactly, exactly. Jesus is all about the Psalms. Um, then the early church is all about the Psalms. Think, right. Is it Colossians 3 where Paul says, encourage each other with Psalms. Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Um, right. So in the end, more interesting, fast forward 1,500 years, get to the Reformation, where yes. interestingly, before that, there's a thousand-year gap where it's illegal to sing songs. Hmm. It's, a, it's fascinating. crazy. It's fascinating. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, unless you're clergy, right? And then right. And the Reformation takes place, and this explosion of the gospel takes place. Right. Um, and then what we see is that there were arguments, like, should we just sing psalms? Should we sing hymns? Should we yes. sing yes. songs that were written brand new? Or should we right. just literally just sing the 150 psalms? Right. Um, and so it's really interesting, just historically, the psalms were and are considered the songs of God's people. Absolutely. Um, and that fast forwards yeah. to the day. And I just actually read an article like last week that was talking about why we should use Psalms for prayer. Mm, and yes. and yeah. they were just saying that historically for years yeah. until now, um, that the church has always used Psalms throughout services each week to, you know, yep. for whatever purposes. Yep. Um, so you can almost say that our time period, like you said, that we've kind of went away for it for a long time. Yeah, we're actually yeah. one of the only time periods in church history that haven't used Psalms, which is right. kind of like sobering, you know. Yeah, yeah, it should be. Um, and I, you know, there's so much being written about this, like right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know Donald Whitley has his uh, his whole text where he's talking about praying through the Psalms mm-hmm. um, as a part of daily uh, right. discipleship in our lives. Um, and you're correct if you go back to like the Reformation writers. Mm-hmm. There's a ton of them not uh, writing hymns that are psalm settings. Um, so if you look at that time period, there was a resurgence of the psalms. Um, fast forward, I think in this country, um, the revivalistic period, there was a ton of songs being written in that period. Maybe a push away from uh, this, and I, I think part of it's the language, right? Um, right. And then we get into like. And I'm I'm fast forwarding and just uh, we're we're having a basic summary of a worship class. Yeah, in, yeah, yeah, in yeah. Three minutes. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's not exhaustive here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in the '90s and 2000s, our language turned very intimate when mm-hmm. it came to God, which I don't necessarily think is a terrible thing. Sure. But it was almost like Jesus became our brother and our pal and our right. and God was just our our homie, you know, for yeah, lack of yeah, a better yeah. way of saying it. Yeah. Instead of this wonderful and rich language that um, understands the holiness of God right. and it settles on His people because they had they knew Him in a different way than we can possibly know Him now. Right. Um, and I, I think we miss something in that. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean that our services need to be stuffy or cold or that all the language needs to be we need to put the tongue of the people on the people's lips sure sure but there needs to be this idea that when we come into worship that we are worshiping a holy and right. imminent and transcendent god mm-hmm. and um you know if he were to open up the heavens and his presence were to become known in that place sure. we would all be struck we couldn't we can't see him in this fleshly body right um so we would be on our faces Mm -hmm. and i think that needs to be reflected in the text that we sing and the psalms give us those words they do from the start so for every situation in life too right because i mean you're talking about depressions covered you're talking about yes yes um just the joyness or joyfulness of coming to god's presence and with praise and worship so every aspect of life is represented in the psalms yeah um, so why would we ever go away from them then? I mean, right, right. So at the very minimum, I think the Psalms need to be read in corporate worship. Sure. Um, but uh, I think there needs to be a return of more and more settings of the Psalms. Yeah. Um, even if they're not exact settings of the Psalms, the the ideas need to be there. And I, I think right. 
the people will respond. And we've had great response on this one. Um, I guess we've got, you know, a good portion of this CD is going to be psalm settings. So right. I because originally realize. the idea was right to yeah the idea of writing psalms in yes. spiritual songs. Yes. So it's it's very. Yeah. Uh, we'll reflected. let the cat out of the bag on that one. Yeah, so yeah. The, the original <laughs> album was going to be called Psalms, Hymns, and Spiritual Songs. Yeah. And what's interesting about that is three <laughs> years ago, if you did a search on iTunes, you wouldn't find any album titles titled that. Yeah. So we were like, oh, okay, well, that's what we'll write. So that's what we intended to mm-hmm. write. And today, if you do a search on iTunes, you get a ton of albums, <laughs> yeah. which is great. Yeah. We're yeah, excited yeah. that people are singing the Psalms. Um, but we didn't name our album that right. after all right. <laughs> as a result of that. See, we were thinking ahead. <laughs> yeah, we, we were so progressive <laughs> that we didn't even realize. Um, no, well, this is, I mean, this has been great. I think yeah. people are going to be. Um, I hope people will be struck with understanding where this song came from. Sure. Um, as are we try to minister this in our church bodies, mm-hmm. but for those who are watching that are not a part of our church, read the Psalms, yeah. sing the Psalms. That's right. Um, let and them I would, soak in. And I would just add really quick too that yeah, for it. was talking about like the holiness of God. Mm. Um, I remember a Francis Chan book called Crazy Love. Yeah. The very first chapter says is is titled "Stop Praying." Mm. And what a what an interesting because it's about radically loving Jesus. Yeah. Um, and his point was that we so often when we come before God in prayer that we don't think about who He is when we speak to Him. Yes. So we go through routines. We you know when we're younger, God is great. God is yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or that it's kind wrote. of mm-hmm. yes, yeah, it's yeah. just very um, routineish. Yep. Um, and his thought was like, listen. Before you just start speaking to God, stop and pause and think. He is the one who, like, angels are around the throne right now saying, right. holy, holy, holy. Like, he is God yeah. Almighty. And that same approach should happen in worship. Amen. Right. Yes. But when we come into God's presence, we should stop and pause and just think, man, this yeah. is the God who created us, the God who saved us. Right. Um, and so with that same idea, of don't just come and start singing. Right. Just come and, like, reflecting on who God is right. at the very core. And then let's respond in the midst of that. Yeah. And of course, through Psalms as well. Yeah. Amen to that. Micah, I got nothing to add to that. As a matter of fact, I would say we need to continue this conversation in another setting yeah, for a yeah. later date because I think um, it's one that's not talked about often enough. Sure. Um, so, but thank you. Looking forward to people hearing King of Glory. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah.